previously on the No VP channel. Thanks, Art. And coming up... Go to... the... the White House? <laughs> I find you very rude. <laughs> The Novimpia Channel is made possible thanks to our gorgeous patrons who get access to exclusive Garbo. And thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Thank you, this snaffy! You do not do, you do not do any more black shoe in which I have lived like a foot for 30 years. Poor and white, barely daring to breathe or hurt you. Daddy, I've had to kill you. You died. What? Is it, have you pressed record? Yes. What did you do? What's that from? Oh, and hello! No, what was that? That was... You are so weird. I was channeling... They'll know. I was channeling my kindred You're spirit. You're very jingly-jangly today. What's making that noise? Probably this. Yeah, but that's nice sound, though. Is it? Is it? I'll take it off. No, you can keep it God, on. I'm absolutely bare naked now. You bought that new I know, I can't you? get it off. Now it's stuck on the <laughs> I hate it here! Can we talk about my eyes? Can you see them? I've like angled them up slightly. I don't do Is that. Is that why you took so long getting ready yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, I'll try it just to see whether I can. And I think I look <laughs> Looks a bit like she's fallen headfirst into a cow pack. They'll be able to uh, determine that at home. As we embark on an all new faves and shitters. I feel like it's actually been ages since we did this. Hey. Well, yeah, because we've been f***ing around with Shara and Glinda. I was thinking of doing Gambit from um. X-Men. We're going to be embarking on our monthly faves and shitters to discuss three things that we like. And three things that are poo -wee. Don't even want it. Don't even like it. This is my birthday month. This is the month that yep. I am strongest. Yep. <laughs> is it? the most power. Okay. Well, we'll see how that works out Seeing for you. Seeing Jonas Brothers in concert. Like a child. Something that smells like manure in here, like a real fresh farm manure smell. I'm hoping it's not what we're doing in the next video, but it could be. Go no, for could just be you. No, fresh manure, like the spreads in mock. <laughs> now, like before Nova bores you to death today. <laughs> Hello, sir, can I take your order? Well, we're going to take a second to talk about the sponsor of this visual treat, aren't we, Nova? I don't know, are we? Yes, and who is it? Surfshark. So we have been using Surfshark for nigh on years and years at this point. It is so yep. useful. If you don't know what it is, it's a, a VPN or a virtual private network that encrypts all the information sent between your device and the internet. So there is no risk of your personal data being compromised. I'm currently on a solo field trip. I'm in a hotel in London because I saw the Jonas Brothers tonight. But because I'm using hotel Wi-Fi, I'm currently um, watching Daredevil with Chromecast, but I'm doing so using Surfshark. Whenever I'm connecting to a hotel Hotel Wi-Fi, I always use Surfshark to protect my data because you never know who's looking at it. And what's more, by downloading Surfshark, you can also change your real world location with a completely new one. So it doesn't matter where in the world you are, if you use Surfshark to change your territory, you'll immediately have access to a whole new selection of things on your favorite streaming platforms. Okay. Like Prime, mm -hmm. Now TV, Hulu, you get it. Which is so useful if you're like us and you watch stuff all over the world, like Eurovision, the traitors, mm. by the way, because they have got servers in over 100 countries. Now you've seen us use Surfshark in so many different ways in the past whether it's getting a bargain on airline tickets or just hiding our internet traffic from our ISP. But did you know it's also available for download on all your devices with unlimited logins? There is absolutely no risk in just trying Surfshark because they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're looking for a brand new VPN, looking to upgrade that crap one that you downloaded years ago and you never even use it, then check out the link in the description box below. Yes, go ahead and use our code NOVIMPIA to get four extra months of free. So make sure you click on the link in the description box below and thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring this month's faves video. Thank you and bonjour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to start with my first fave. Go oh, on. Fairy Delta. Oh. <laughs> now I've taken, I mean, you know that we film like once a week or once every couple of weeks mm -hmm. and getting into drag takes... 84 years. It seems to take longer every time. It took you a long time today. Well, I was I experimenting. I started later than you. I was and I was just... Hanging about on the bed with the kids for about yeah I know but I look positively arresting. I am arresting you on suspicion of serving. <laughs> what are you going to order later on? I don't know. Okay, so sometimes you sort of if you're not feeling in the mood, you don't really have an option because we have to film. Once it's all on, excellent, you're always there. But sometimes you don't have the motivation to do it. We're all aware of very Delta. If you don't know who Delta work is, I'd find that very unusual if you're one of our viewers to not know who she is. But she's an American drag queen, most known for being on season. three three, I want to say, of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, season three. She's lovely. She's so funny. She's so authentic. 
and she has her own podcast where she interviews usually other brew girls or sort of LGBT people. Perverts. Her set is like an 80s living room of like a middle-aged it's woman. It's very high production. Oh, it's so great. I love it. You like wild times. Oh, like me. And so, you know, we've all seen clips of it. More recently, you might have seen her do a blind taste test to compare different Diet Cokes from different restaurants, <laughs> which is excellent. Insane. Did you hear that? Sorry. I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to listen to a full episode. And I loved it so much that now I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to save it just for when I get ready is when I listen to Very Delta. So now it's like a treat. Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be serving <laughs> and it also means that I get more excited That's about putting clever. my face on. It's like a two for one mm. deal. And my favorite thing about it is that she will moan. I mean, she calls it, do you want to see me go off? Do you want to see me go off? She'll moan about the smallest inconvenience, not had great customer service in a restaurant, a discontinued bit of makeup. She will go off on this rant, which usually would be really irritating in someone. She's just moan, moan, moan. But she does it in the most endearing way possible. <laughs> And she's fucking hysterical. I just I listened to, I think it might have been Adore Delano. And the segment at the beginning where she moans, she was comparing different flushable wipes. I love the way that they come out. And she was ranking them. And she was like, this one, I would never use it. I'd rather just ha be walking around with a shitty ass than use this. Oh and she was God. going into such depth. I would rather just walk around with a shitty ass. And it's that little, it's the attention to detail that she puts into these rants about like, oh, someone's pissed her off at the Olive Garden. I just love it. It's like being on the phone to your mum. Listen to your filthy mouth, you fucking whore. I love it. Everything about it. I look <laughs> I can't get away with saying that. Oh, just pulled. Okay. My first fave. So here we go. Is um, a docu-series I'm watching at the moment on Apple TV called K-pop Idols. I'm waiting for the eye roll and the sigh. Open Gangnam Style. No. This is a relatively new docu-series on Apple TV documenting a period of time, I think during 2022, following three artists. So we're following Jesse, who I'm a big fan of, the girl group Black Swan, who is very messy and has loads of drama around them, and I'm really surprised they actually let her They're like the sugar babes, around. there's always a different lineup. Now there's a new bitch in my pop. Yeah, but like, just there's so much more to it. And then a boy group called Cravity, who I'm not overly familiar with. I feel like this year, 2024, there's been a, a wave of different styled now there's a new bitch. docu series is about different parts of K-pop recently. That it's been really interesting to watch because they're all very, very unique in their own way. And I think this is one of my favorites because it really gives you an insight into the lives of these people, just a snapshot this this year. Jessie I'm a huge fan of. So it was, she's been followed around during a tour that I actually attended. So that was really interesting to see all the stresses and difficulties that she had being completely self-funded. Black Swan are just a state. Like I, I <laughs> love them and it's not, it is not their fault at all i i what probably one of their like i don't i don't I can't imagine they've got many fans i don't know uh, the shit that i've seen you don't have that many their record label is so weird and so shady this isn't making their record label look good i'm surprised we're seeing it and then gravity is cute because they're like a new Pop band. they like just recently debuted that's the worst name ever what does that mean it's like crap and it's gravity. a combination of creativity and gravity no it's a combination of crap and gravity is what i hear crappity for crossing it, which is the integration of the words fat crock of shit. But it's interesting to see their struggles because they debuted during COVID. So they debuted without live audiences and they didn't get a very good reception at first. But it's just a super cool insight into the world of K-pop. I thought, I got a bit authentic. confused at the beginning because I thought you were um, talking about touch, 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 Turn it off! I do love that as well, but I thought... Oh, it's not easy, that. No, it's It's fascinating that you sort of watch... Because I know for a fact you you watched that documentary about Cat's Eye. They were doing all the dancing and Nova's toxic trait is that she was looking at that being like, oh, how hard could that be to do? Absolutely not. And then there's me really <laughs> struggling with like a patting the belly situation here. <laughs> well, that was, that's my first Ooh, thing. shitters. And I've forgotten all of them. There is this fucking advert that drives Dominoes. me. No, although that could easily be that's on the list. awful. Domino. I've written down Lenore Freshness advert. So it's a bunch of people, I don't even know what the product is. Can a Lenore bed get any fresher? No way. Blimey, this is twice as fresh. Way more. Okay, it's a fabric softener 
but scent boosters. It's like a tube of like, I don't really understand the purpose of a scent booster. What? It's like a tube of like little balls and you put them in with your laundry to make it smell better. But isn't that just admitting that the main product doesn't smell as strong as you'd like it? That's not why I dislike the advert by the way. I'm just confused what the product is to begin uh, with. I don't know. I think it's just a, a gimmick. A scent booster. It's a gimmick. What was that? They play it at the cinema before a picture. I don't recall they ever play having it. seen this. It's one of the reasons why I really dislike watching stuff on ITV player because they seem to play it all the time over there. Help! And it's a bunch of people in the park and they're all getting in this bed, sniffing this bedding and just going, F me, that's so fresh. But there is a sea, an ocean of people out there, F me, who are busting their balls to try and make it in the world of advertising. Some very talented people who cannot get a leg up and some asshole wrote the script. Blimey, this is twice as fresh. Way more. Way more. F me. I it Anywhere nice? <laughs> Anywhere nice? What? <laughs> I just, like, what's their barometer for freshness? This smells twice as fresh as that. Way more. <laughs> Someone actually wrote down on the script. And an old dream team. Way more fresh. <laughs> It boils my piss when I see this advert that someone actually was like, oh, that Lenore Freshness advert's due tomorrow. What shall I write down? That shit's fresh. Way more fresh than that. And they turned it in and they were like, yeah. Yeah, you know what? We're going to sell some of this. And it just irritates me because what's their barometer for freshness? Okay. Can't stand it. If you see this Lenore Freshness advert, turn your television device off and don't buy it. A weird message just popped up on the viewfinder and I couldn't <sighs> see what it was on the lower left. They were agreeing screen. with me about Lenore Freshness. My first shitter is the decline of movie theatre etiquette. Oh. That's I, very interesting, isn't it? I feel like going to the cinema is getting more and more expensive. The, the tickets now cost like at least £10, normally like £15. I borrowed £160,000. If you want snacks, it's like another £15. So there's a lot of you going. It's quite an expense. And I love going to the cinema. I mm -hmm. think it's such, it's like the best it's way to treat. see. It's a treat. It's a treat. The water bed. To see a film that you're really excited about, it's like the best experience. But some people don't know how to act. And it drives me f***ing insane. I can't stand people on their phones, so you just see the light. I hate people that don't have their phone on silent. I hate people that kind of just like... I don't do laundry. I don't do windows. I don't do car... Really noisily eat. I, I think the worst thing that cinemas ever did was start selling nachos. That was such a mistake. What are you yeah, doing that for? Yeah, packets and stuff What are you doing that in. for? Popcorn is noisy enough, but at least it's like a muted, dull sound. Do you know what I mean? Pa Whereas like nachos is like a crack. Yeah, but I can kind of forgive that a bit because you can't really help it. What do you do? Just not eat the food? The worst one. The worst thing. I had to shush somebody. I don't care that you broke your elbow. Recently. <sighs> uh, uh, people talk Talking. People that talk Ooh. through a film that they've paid, you and they have paid to see, and they talk through it. How dare you? How dare you? It's funny that it, it's got more expensive over time and etiquette has got worse. Do you, know, you doing do you know what it is? Is because people's attention span has been really been deadened. Brains have been rotted. People's attention span, especially young people's ability to sort of stick with something rather than just have instant gratification, has just really been kind of eroded away because of like TikTok. Chrissy. <laughs> shorts. That's not good. What's next? What's next? It's, you can't just sit there and be yeah. like, okay, I'm going to give this a slow burn. They get bored and they start to fidget. It's so frustrating. If I'm going to a cinema, I want as close to silence as possible. I feel like we've both had old lady complaints. It's a really annoying advert. I just think there's no creativity to it. It's so shit. Like What's you could literally write that on the toilet. What's your next fave? <laughs> Please make it stop. My fave. Okay. There's no dairy in this in this episode. Oh. Well, there's a little bit. Oh, so you're alive. Not really. Okay, so. Please make it stop. There is a kind of oven pizza that I have discovered. The ZZ's ones. No, it's really good. <laughs> Big girl, you are beautiful. I feel like, okay, there's kind of like three different categories of pizza that you can have. There's like, yeah, top end pizza oven, traditional, really great Italian yeah, restaurant. Like wood stove baked. Yeah, Italian yeah fresh style. ingredients, yeah. fresh. Then there's Lovely. like American style takeout thick base or like Chicago style. You know what I mean? Real trashy. But boxes. still like nice. Still Depends good. on what you're in the mood for. And then there's like oven pizzas you do at home because you've only got 20 minutes 
before yeah. you need to go somewhere and it's like, I'll throw in this piece of crap pizza. I like milk with pizza. And mostly they're all much of a muchness. You know, the base is going to be a little bit dry probably and well, it's it not going to be like the most exciting thing in the world. But there is this pizza I found. I like milk with pizza. It's a ZZ's and I'm sorry if you don't have ZZ's in the territory in which you reside. That's a chain of, uh, they're not Italian, are they? Are they Italian? Probably supposed to be, aren't they? It's yeah. a chain. A no, they are because they do the dried the pasta crisps there, don't oh, they? Oh yeah, okay. What is that? <laughs> and they've done this, it's like a thin base. The one I like is like a farmhouse one and it comes with like a basil a oil, house, ham, ham mushroom. and mushroom, basically. Right. They do a sort of really meaty one, but it's got like sausage on it. And I always think that's gross on a pizza. It's too heavy. Oh. I like it to be very sort of like sophisticated. Michelle Pfeiffer, Treat Williams. Milk with pizza. But the base on this is somewhere between an oven pizza and like a real thin Italian base. There's a slight chew to it. Are they frozen or are they They're fresh? frozen, They're frozen pizzas. They're just like frozen shit of pizzas. They're not expensive or anything. But the base has got a chew to it that resembles like a restaurant style mm. pizza. I'm hoping they'll see this and send me loads of them. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> the cheese on it is a mozzarella. It's like that fior, fior de lettuce. Fiero di Letti. You know that kind of, you order a mozzarella peat with mozzarella on it, you can get right. a fancy kind of mozzarella. Like buffalo mozzarella. No, no, no. It's like fleur di Letti. I have no idea what you're talking Miller, about. Miller fleur di Letti. There's a kind of mozzarella, you'll know at home. No, it's just like... Italy. <laughs> oh, no, we're not doing that again. Michelle Pfeiffer, Treat Williams. Me. Really nice cheese, great ingredients. Like it's not entirely like what you get in a restaurant because you can obviously tell. Fred, uh, let's throw it in. We've got 20 minutes before we head out to meet someone. Let's ha throw in an oven pizza. Try it. I like the Dr. Oitger ones. Yeah, that, that, there it is. See, what is that? It's like when I strike a pose. See, look there. Wow. It says. <laughs> My next fave is a song. Just me, I'm do you know what? I feel like August and September so far, there have been so many good releases that I've really, really enjoyed music wise. And I really struggle to pick a song, but this one, I feel like if I really think about it, I'm vibing with the most. And this is Flicker of Light by Lola Young. Lola Young is a British artist yeah. that you introduced me to. Yeah, I imagine you, I did it. You introduced me to a song that I didn't really think much of. And then I revisited it several weeks later with the music video and I just kind of got it a bit more. I was introduced to her by Alicia Michelle. Laka, laka. Oh. Eurovision YouTuber who said that the UK should submit her to oh. be our representative because she's so like the opposite of what we usually send. She's very, very young, but very, she's got like a wise head on her shoulders. She's singing like she's wise beyond her years. A lot of her music's quite personal about her own struggles growing up and dealing with her mental health and past relationships. And it can be a little bit bleak. This song, the lyrics all about like acknowledging that like everything can be very overwhelming and very stressful and it's very it's a lot of pressure to try and get yourself out of that rut when you find yourself being swallowed up by it but there's always a flicker of light and what's the, what's the chorus going there's always morning after the night and I just think it's such a lovely sentiment and it's like a really upbeat fun song she's definitely one to watch out for I think she did a few festivals this year her debut album is out now and I can't remember what it's called but this I don't think is on the album I think this is a new a new release like for maybe the next album but if you've not heard of Lola Young you want to check her out she's got the most amazing Amazing voice, really interesting, unique artist. No, there's my flicker of light. Aww. Flicker bean. Why do you have to spoil everything? My what is it now? Um, shitter. I have had a surge recently and I feel like- I thought you said surgery. <laughs> I've had so much surgery recently. I've had a second <laughs> ass side onto my third ass. And she'll have breast augmentation, tummy tuck, and a second ass side onto my <laughs> third ass. This seems to be way more common now than it used to be. Cold callers, like unknown numbers, oh, ringing you. your phone. Sometimes I'll recognize the number and it will have called like twice in the same day. And you could immediately just be like, why don't you just answer the fucking phone? Canela Norbert. 
bed get any fresher? No way. Let's find out. They're trying the Lenore... Nobody calls that needs to contact me really is going to phone me apart from my mother and then her name's going to come up. Everyone else, it'll be like an email but if they or do, a message. They'll leave a voicemail. And if they do want you, they'll leave a voicemail. So... Is this a cocksucker residence? Nine times out of ten, I'm not going to answer the phone. Unless it's like I'm expecting a call from the vet or something, then I'll be like, oh, that could be because it's like the area code or whatever. It's happening all the time. You see like unknown number, withheld number, or it'll say like Birmingham or something on it. Because sometimes it tells you where it's from, doesn't it? Underneath yeah. it. I feel like it was maybe a couple of weeks ago. I might have had numbers? like three or four in the same day. No. Why? Block it. How'd you do that? I didn't know how to do that. You go onto the number and you block it. That sounds hard. <laughs> it's not. I, I can't. I don't. Go on to like your recent calls. I'll show you. Well, I wouldn't recognise now. Macclesfield. Right. No. Oh, don't. I don't want to call it. <laughs> Come on, I grandma. called Macclesfield. Block caller. Well, it's more work than I wanted to do. No, they can't call you again. Well, look. Where's Macclesfield? I copy and paste the number into Google. Into Google. I do do and that. often it'll be like, this is a scam. Yeah. And yeah. to be honest, I don't know why we don't just answer it, listen for a second, and then you can just hang up. But when I was younger, I remember there being the thing that people could like reverse charge calls yeah, just by probably. you picking it up. And that's probably not a thing anymore. Granny? I don't know, but you I'm still paranoid You don't want to allow that way in. I don't in. want to open up that line of communication You don't want to, open, you don't want to do you. it. So it's fucking irritating. I just think people that try and scam, I mean, it's uh, people that try and scam you over the phone. Who smells of poo? That has got to be the most depressing lifestyle in the, in the world. The thing that I think irritates me the most is that my phone is connected to my laptop, which I'm on for considerable amounts of the day with headphones in. And whereas my phone's on silent and won't go off, that will ding 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 do 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 and I'll literally be, it'll be like Mrs. Selner when it goes <laughs> what off. What kind of ringtone is that? That's the ringtone, the one. You can change it, can't you? Do, 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 do. I don't know what that is. You, no, but the ringtone. Do, 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 do. There's more than one ringtone. Yeah, but the what the famous one. I don't know. Okay, so there's. Bong, ba, ba, da, ba, no, where's that one guy? Is this you doing tattoo again by gargling water? <laughs> <laughs> Your shit in our please know that. <laughs> this is the glamorous Monique one. That's what I was doing. Da, 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 da. Fuck me, that's really difficult to try and replicate. We all know it. Everyone knows it. Yeah, 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 I'll be there. My next shitter is... I mean, I don't know why we do it to ourselves. We watched a film recently that had terrible reviews and we watched it anyway oh, in you're spite not of... you're going to do what I think you're going to do. The Deliverance mm. on Netflix. Horror movie with Glenn Close. Yeah, the internet was taking the piss out of this. There's one scene in particular that I'm sure we'll be able to play here. I can smell your nose. Be pushing. What? That went viral and it grabbed everyone's attention and I think that was enough to kind of like sell the movie and I think it probably did well on Netflix, I would imagine so, because everybody you saw that wants to watch the film, don't they? That's part of the reason why we wanted to watch That's it. That's the only reason I watched it. Yeah, but the reason why it's on my shit is, is because like a shit film is a shit film, like that's fine, it is what it is, our own stupidity for watching it. But this kind of like catfishes you. Yeah, yeah, fine. Because I'd say the first two thirds of the film is good. Like I actually was re really getting into it and then they start to inject horror elements into it in the most clumsy, cheap, ill-thought-out way. <laughs> And the whole thing just dissolves into mush. Their acting performances are so great. Do you know, the cast is so good. Obviously, Glenn Close is in it. Monique there's, is in it, there's, by there's, the way. The characters are so well established and you really get a sense of who these people are and what they're about and what they're doing. Because it's this is the same director um, who did Precious, which is such an incredible film. <laughs> very, very intense drama. There's some hideous stuff in it, but it is a drama. You've been calling this office saying... <laughs> And it felt like this was going to be something in a similar vein. And then all of a sudden people are climbing on the walls and you were like, it's oh just yeah, a it's really a horror. Naff what? Exorcist film. And I'm all for a slow burn, as you will remember if you've seen the motion picture event of the decade. <laughs> Hoax. I've never heard of it. Hoax 2 win. Yeah, but a slow burn. There's a slow burn and then there's, oh, it looks like they changed their minds halfway through. A crap burn. Who smells of poo? There was a review on Rotten Tomatoes that was something like, Quack. works very good when it leans into like melodrama. Yeah. Which is exactly what it is. And then what the, the demon shit was 
ridiculous. I felt like they were trying to create moments for social media. Push it. And they did. That's why people are watching this film. But I would have more enjoyed, I think, if it went more a Babadook route, if they wanted to do a kind of spirit, demon haunting horror film. Drip feed it to us a little bit earlier on. Don't just squeeze it all into the last act. I'm just going to clear this Lenore freshness advert <laughs> to talk to you about my final favourite Nova with Air. This comes with a piece of music, if I can find it. Is it the music? No. Who smells- What is happening? Hang on, let me try and find it. <laughs> what was that? This is- this is not it. I don't need the music, I just thought it would be nice. Okay, that's just a train, isn't it? Alright, my- <laughs> I'll find it and put it in. Oh, this is it. I didn't even mean to put it on. It just happened. To... Oh, so my last fave is the movie The Railway Children. I don't know I've ever seen it. <gasps> oh, sorry. <laughs> Have you not seen The Railway Children? I think so. Yes, she has. This is probably copyrighted music. Two. No. Probably. They didn't have copyright in 1970, no. They did. They didn't. The Railway Children is a classic. Okay, so the original one, not... I think there was a remake. There was also a sequel, which was a bit suspect. But anyway. All I know about it is that it's like an iconic old-timey film. So it's from 1970. Jenny Agatha is in it, who's so prish. And it's about three kids whose father gets sent to jail. Okay. Why? Also, it's set in like the early... I want to say it's set in like 1910, there about. And so they have to go live on a in a tiny house, and this is a rich family. They have to go live in a tiny house in the countryside and adjust to having absolutely no money. It's a bit like shit's creek. You gonna say it's a bit like <laughs> shit's creek. And they live by a railway, and it's these like cute little stories about this railway. And there's like a landslide on the railway, and they manage to stop the train by waving their red underwear at it. If you know this movie in in sort of British culture and law, there is one scene in particular. Is it that British? Is very. Oh, okay. Very British. There's one scene at the end. If there was ever like a Channel Four late night show where it was like movies, like the the 100 movie scenes to make you cry or whatever, it would always be on there because there's a really really sad scene towards the end. That if you know this movie, you know what I'm talking. About. Daddy, my daddy! Happy. But I love this. I put it on all the time. Mostly because that piece of music is haunting Nova. Lovely. It's really lovely. No, it's lovely. You liked it. <laughs> and also because it's very, it's just such a sweet movie. It's surprisingly funny, which I don't think you really appreciate when you're a kid. I dare say. I dare say. I dare say. If you say I dare say once more, I shall have hysterics, I dare say. But this was always on in our house, the Railway Children. You know, I just think if you're ever feeling a bit like ill or a bit under the weather, the Railway Children will always come through for you. It's adorable. Is it a musical? No, you'd probably actually hate it. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it sounds it's no, really boring. No, it's, no, we're going to watch it. Now that I know you've not seen The Railway Children, I'm very thrilled and excited. It sounds really boring. We can't watch it like in the next seven days because I watched it yesterday. So give it like eight days. I stopped, I stopped you before. I don't like your tone. <laughs> will you do me a favour and choke on this red? This is my last vote. Yeah, yeah. So... I feel. A little while ago, we had a teaser trailer. Oh no, we didn't actually. We had, we had this poster first. So you're a liar. I am not a racist person. For a upcoming film that I don't think has been released yet called We Live in Time. And um, it's starring Andrew Garfield. I really want to watch it. It looks like a really lovely, romantic, sad thing going to make you cry. Happy. Have you seen the film poster for this? I've seen maybe a press junket where they were talking about like dildos or something. Andrew Garfield said that his phone is just full of dick pics. Oh yeah. And pics. Florence Pugh said she was doing a set down at Joe Dildo. Name's Ronnie, yeah, I'm on my life. <laughs> this was the poster that was like... This is your fave, is the poster, is it? Now I know what it is with that stupid horse. <laughs> and people keep... So this was like the first image from the film. And there is this carousel <laughs> horse <laughs> in the foreground. <laughs> How did anybody think that that wasn't going to take the internet by storm? Maybe they thought it they would. Probably Maybe probably that was care. the whole point. Yeah. But it looks outrageous. And you I've want a viral saved, moment, don't you? I've saved some of my favourite tweets. So there was this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> sake <laughs> so you like the <laughs> i like the ones with lots of horses and it's nice isn't it it's something a bit different it's nice to sort of look at oh shit there's a lot 
Yeah. Uh, know, oh, wait, that, this is a good one. What's so weird about you that people might not be aware of is for someone who's so, like... Selfish in bed. Haughty. The horse awakens. For someone who's so sort of haughty, pissy, maddy, you are so amused by the dumbest, so the dumbest crap you really appreciate. Oh God, why have they changed the color of her face in that? <laughs> okay, I think we get the purpose now. I'm not putting all of these in. <laughs> I'm not putting them all it's in. quite a selection. I'm not putting them in. What the f is Oh, I'm not putting them in. <laughs> Goon horse. <laughs> She's really happy about a goon horse. Thank you for that one. So now... That brought me so much joy. Yeah, you so are amused stupid. by stuff. You know, a five-year-old would find that funny. Two. I don't think a five-year-old would really quite grasp the nuance oh, in the comedic value one. of that carousel horse. We're going to argue about this last one because I don't think you're quite in the same camp this as me. This is shitter. This is my final shitter. Is when a documentary will upscale the shit <clears throat> out of old footage to the point where it looks creepy and distracting and there is absolutely no purpose for doing it. Okay, you Hate say, it, I, hate I, it. I, I do have an opinion on this. So we have had an argument before about using cutaway clips in our garbage videos where Nova will be like, oh, that's a bit like low- Low res. Res. So I'll like run a, a 4K like filter over it or an ups, upscale it or whatever using AI and then see what comes out. And I just hate the results. I don't think people, first of all, care or expect something. You know, if it was released in like 2002 and it's a square and it's the only way we've got it is in like 720 or whatever. I don't think anyone really gives a shit because that's how it was viewed. Like that's how it was supposed to be viewed and therefore doesn't need to be shiny, shiny 4K. It's often not how it was viewed. It's just been poorly Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand trying to make it look better, but it doesn't look better. There was a clip I saw, I think it was the Celine Dion documentary that came out and there was a clip of her and it must have been from the 80s possibly and it was some sort of throwaway footage of her in the studio laughing and, and sort of joking around and stuff but they had upscaled it and her eyes started to go really weird and it was distracting and she looked fucking demonic if it's from the 80s people will know that it's a bit shit it's insulting I think to your audience to have to really really try and shine and polish something up to the point where it's super distracting and it's worse in like a true crime documentary documentary situation. I just don't feel like you have the kind of right to then call it a documentary when you're not giving something over in the purest form. I think sometimes it has a purpose if it's trying to make something clearer that wasn't necessarily as clear in the original thing. I think, and I fell into this a little bit when I started doing some of the cutaways. <laughs> is that it was so exciting to have this tool. Sometimes you don't step back and be like, does this actually look better? So what we're seeing now, I think, is a wave of, now there's a, new of a wave of documentaries that were made back when I was feeling this way. Yeah. And they're just now Hopefully being released. Hopefully it will, it will slow the fuck down. And also I feel like they're so much better now than they were like a year ago. You could do shit now that wouldn't look creepy and that would look really, really great. But we just haven't come round to the, that wave. If you're gonna show in a documentary about like a serial killer or whatever, a photograph from the 70s, we should be able to see the photograph from the 70s. Yeah. Not some version of it. Like you've said, you hit the nail on the head. It's like a Jurassic Park situation where they were so wrapped up in whether or not they could. They didn't stop to think whether or not but they should. I've now got the latest version of Topaz video what's it called gigapixel i, th I think is neopets the... no and it is amazing well that's lovely um hate it stop doing it your shitter please my last shitter speaking of actually that was quite a good segue now there's a new Everything, every f***ing thing nowadays. You can't own shit. You gotta pay a monthly subscription for it. You can't own anything, everything you gotta subscribe to. And why? The whole point of like streaming services as well was that it was supposed to be like stuff that wasn't available on television and it was like a bit different. And now we've got so many, every single pissing studio is launching a subscription streaming platform. We're just recreating television. 
No. But you can't get it all on like Sky. You've got to get every single f***ing channel individually. It pisses me right off. Why do you buy a piece of software now and it's not yours? You've got to pay a subscription for it. Why can't I just buy Photoshop? Why do I have to pay for it monthly? Why can't I just buy Microsoft Office like I used to? Why do you have to pay for it monthly? Why do birds so Why are we paying monthly to play video games online when we already pay monthly for the broadband? And we've already bought the game and the console. It's my internet. Why am I paying for the privilege to use my own f***ing internet on a game that I've already paid for? What I had to do to get from where I was to where I am now! <laughs> me. It really, really pisses me you off. You are going to need to just chill the f*** out, Nova, because you're going insane. <gasps> You're going to end up on a piece of footage in a true crime documentary that someone's upscaled. I have upscaled. seen examples of printers which are require a monthly subscription. Oh my god, James, you can't even use your own printer. You can't eat, like that's what that's outrageous. sick in the edge. That's sick, that's outrageous. Sick in the edge. E everyone's trying to sell you a subscription, cat food subscriptions. I thought you were going to say like cats only fans. Then no. she doesn't have one, does she? <laughs> I don't feel like I have that problem though. I only really use Final Cut and I purchased that. Is that not a, the latest one though? Well, you buy it and then you just update it. Up Do they not charge they you They charge you to upgrade it. So this is what happened with Microsoft Office. Oh. I had, I think Microsoft Office 2021. And then I upgraded my computer and it didn't recognize it. It was like, oh, it's a new device. So you've got to buy me again. And I was like, for sake. Oh. I'm never, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to get over it. And Send this, an email. So the segue was from Topaz. That's an example of a piece of software where you buy it for a year's worth of updates. And then when the year is up, you will die. You can't update it anymore unless you pay for another year. Send someone an email, Nova. Tell her, go to the, the White House. <laughs> Do we have, where would you go here? I don't know, but Not it's the White House. really annoying. Go to Big Ben. What's inside Big Bear? That's something, isn't it? Bim bom, bim bom. Thank you for coming for this, faves and shitters. I've really enjoyed myself, Nova. Good, I'm glad. Very, very soon, depending on when this comes out, which I think I've got this correct, is the beginning of spooky season. Mm. We've got some real treats in store for you. So stick with and us. And tricks. Stick with us for Halloween. Now, I like to just cut the that so it's like flat. Oh, you do. <laughs> Listen, we have got a Patron. Monthly subscription. Where I believe there is going to be some Halloween and exclusive content over there just for those guys. And if you'd like to check that out, the link will be arriving on screen just now. Ah! What you gonna do with all that ass? But Nova, what are you gonna do with all that ass? <laughs> Punch it. Some of the guys on the Patreon get birthday shout outs, Nova, including. But not limited to. For September 20th, Gary Rowland. Happy birthday, Gary. Ah! I don't know if that's a relation of Kelly. Perhaps if Gary tries to text us through Excel, then we'll know. For September 22nd, it's Ryan and Lou. Happy birthday, Ryan, and happy birthday, Lou. Ryan. And that's it. Oh, can gosh. you believe it? Happy birthday. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes. We also we have a you. bloody Twitch, don't we? We do have a bloody Twitch. Yeah, yeah, for game night, for hanging out. I'm currently fun. playing Final Fantasy X and some kind of horror thing. And I am currently, I imagine I will have finished the Crush House by the time this goes out. We'll be continuing the build of Novimpia World, which is a theme park in Planet Coaster. Very, very exciting. Oh, and that's probably it. Our uh, social media and all the rest. It's all here, it's all there, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and you know, feel free to subscribe. Yeah, if please you do. want to, but chances are, if you're watching this and you're already subscribed. So there's nothing <laughs> left for me to say, except daddy, daddy, you bastard, I'm through. What? And a new bitch in the pop band to our brand new patrons Jenny Bulmer, Murder Cake, Jack Warren, Benjamin Qu and Lee1972. That was bookends of the video because I opened with a poem by Sylvia Plath. <laughs> How do you like remember you feeling remember her it? today? I don't remember stuff. Do you know I can recite you the whole poem? Do you want to hear it? No. Join the Patron, we'll do a shot of Patron.